Welcome to Profit and Prosper, a podcast for entrepreneurs who are ready to make some money while doing what they love. On this podcast, we're going to pull back the curtain and talk about all things business and money, but I promise you this is not your typical boring numbers talk. I'm your host, Sarah Young, a CPA and CFO with over a decade of experience in finance, business, and leadership. I'm going to share everything I've learned from helping my clients grow more profitable businesses and keep more of what they earn while growing my own successful business along the way. You'll feel empowered and confident that you too can grow your wealth, live a rich life, and have an impact. Stick with me and you might even start to think that finance is fun. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Profit and Prosper. I'm so excited for you to listen to this week's episode because I am interviewing one of my clients, Mary Jane Wilson, who is the founder and owner of the Thoughtful Baking Company. The Thoughtful Baking Company is a farmer's market based farm to table bakery making thoughtfully created comfort food. And I have to tell you, if you are in Charlotte, North Carolina, you have to go to one of the farmer's markets that Mary Jane is at and get some of her, get one of her pot pies. They are amazing. And I actually just talking about it makes me want to go get one. In this episode, you are going to hear Mary Jane and I talking about how she started her business just over a year ago and found just honestly amazing success with keeping things simple. And we talk about how she was able to hire her first team members last summer in the first year of her business, how she managed to continue to keep things profitable and how she has shifted her business going into year two to be able to pay herself more and grow her business even more sustainably. She also has three young daughters. And so I know all of my mom business owners out there will appreciate this episode because we just talk about the things that come up as a mom and as a business owner and how to create more space for yourself and how success doesn't always mean that you have to work ever harder. In this interview, you will also hear Mary Jane talking about my program, which is my 12 week profit and prosper program. In that program, she laid out all of her financials and implemented systems to help her map things out and get a good sense of where she's going in her business, which has enabled her to know what she can afford, to have a cash cushion set aside, to pay herself regularly, set money aside for taxes, and just remove a lot of the stress and second guessing that happens with business owners and to feel more confident about making her next moves in her business. The doors are open now for my 12-week Profit and Prosper program. So if you are feeling like you are ready to add $10,000 to your bottom line in Q2, if you are ready to manage your money like a successful CEO would, the time is now for you to come and join my program. The doors are only open a few times a year, So sign up between now and April 11th to join the Q2 cohort. If you have questions about the program, the fastest, easiest way to get them answered directly from me is to send me a DM on Instagram at youngcocfo, and I will give you all the details. All right, I'm so excited for you to listen to this week's episode. Let's jump in. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Profit and Prosper podcast. I'm so excited. Mary Jane is here from Thoughtful Baking Co. She is one of my clients and has an amazing business. I'm so excited to get just some behind the scenes about her business um, today on this episode. So hi, Mary Jane. Thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for having me. Awesome. So for those of or for people in my audience who don't know you, who have not experienced your amazing pies, will you <laughs> give me, tell us who you are and tell us about your business and what you do? Yeah. So uh, Thoughtful Baking Company was a COVID baby business. Um, I started in the, the winter of 2021. Um, so we're just celebrating a year, but we are a farm to table pop-up bakery. 
um, which means we don't have a storefront. We sell at local farmers markets um, and everything that we make is sort of centered around local um, seasonal ingredients. So we do some like entree pies, we do chicken pot pies and veggie pot pies. And then we also do desserts um, and other baked goods. Yes. And so for anybody who is in Charlotte, these pies are amazing and you need to go get one. We'll put all of the info on how to find them in the show notes. Um, actually, the first time I ever had one was we had COVID, everybody in my family and Mary Jane is just like the nicest human being and <laughs> dropped off pies and soup on our, on our front doorstep the week that we were in COVID quarantine. And it was just really nice to have food. And so she said, well, it's really hard for me to like accept help from people, but she messaged me and she said, do you want pies? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, that's so nice that she drove down and she said, I just like to feed people. And I just thought that was like the coolest thing, right? It's like this intersection of doing something that you really love to do and doing something in alignment with your values, right? Going with the local ingredients and like thoughtfully sourced things and like your pies, like they don't have like crazy ingredients in them. I'm very big. People probably don't know this about me. I'm very big on like clean eating and all of that stuff too. Um, and so I just thought that was great and they were so good. Well, <laughs> so. I'm glad that you love me. And it's like the ultimate comfort food, which is kind of, you know, it came out of COVID because that's what we all needed. Um, as well as the local aspect is great, not only at, from a health standpoint, but even looking at economically of like what we saw with the supply chains and still are seeing. Um, so if you can get it within your region, it's like just a win-win across the board. Yes, I, I totally agree with all of that. So just tell me a little bit, you said it was a COVID business, like kind of like everybody has a COVID baby. I know a lot of people started businesses during that time because of either you lost your job or you just had more time at home and more free time. And a lot of people decided to like, Hey, let me use this time and start, start up the business I've always thought about. So tell me like, why, like, how did it get started? And what were the things that, as you started up, that sort of surprised you about running a business? Cause you've only, you've been in business for a little over a year. Right. So yep. like, what are the things in the first year that were like, I did not expect this to happen? You know, just, just tell me that. Yeah. So it started, um, so I was in the world of French pastries for nine years. Um, and had a lot of ex uh, experience managing, you know, we had over 200 employees at one point. So I really like creating the food and managing a large team. I was like super comfortable with, and I just kind of realized like, I don't want to work for someone else anymore. Um, so left that job in November, um, not necessarily by choice. Um, uh, I was laid off. And so I was, I took a month to kind of like, I knew I wanted to make food. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, like specifically yet. I also knew that I didn't want to put myself into a ton of debt. I wanted to start small, you know, just kind of figure out how to make a living feeding people. So um, I did decide to go with chicken pot pies. That was like the first thing that we did. And I did that. That was always my go-to for you know, somebody sick, new home, new baby, like that was always my like kind of food gift that I would give to people. Um, and so that was the first thing that we started with. So I had to, you know, find a, a, I knew I wanted to do local. I knew I wanted everything to be around local. So found a local farmer to get chickens from. Um, I work with Freshlist a lot, which is a great company, which is kind of like an online farmer's market. They make it very easy to support local because it's all online. You can pre-order pick up or deliver. And so that was kind of my first step was I knew I wanted to get with Freshless. I knew I wanted to use local and then I needed to find a kitchen. So I reached out to um, an old employer of mine, um, Holly with Delectables by Holly. And so she has this amazing kitchen space and she is in the events um, world, which was not happening at that time. So like her kitchen was just kind of sitting here. Um, and so I came down and we sat and talked for a long time and she was like, let's do it. You know, like you're welcome to share the space here. So I'm still here and I, we, we share the space. I rent the space from her, um, which has been a really great, great situation for all of us. Um, I always try to help them when I can and they definitely are here to support as well. 
Um, and then I started applying to farmer's markets. So started in one. And I remember that day, my husband and I went, I had my mom watch the kids and it was like early March, I think. And it was at the South end market. And we did like, I brought two coolers and we sold out and I went back to the kitchen to get more pies. And we did like $800 that day. And I was like, wow, like this can be, this can work. Like I can do this. Um, yes. so that was the first step. So then I started like looking into applying to other markets. Um, and so we ended up last year, we were at, let's see, three on Saturday and then the Camp North End one on Wednesday, even just doing a couple markets was a lot. So I would like come in the kitchen in the morning, make all the stuff, then go work the market at night. And it was, to, you know, I was quickly becoming exhausted <laughs> and realizing that like I need help so I did I did hire somebody to help me um in May I think um and so she was with me and then once we started adding the other markets I also realized you know I need people to work it because my husband was helping me a lot on that um and so we and then I had another two two new people that started um who I had worked with in the past um but they both started with me full-time in July and so that was kind of like full season going um, and we rocked it out, made it happen. Um, we really, I was really impressed and surprised by like what we could do sales wise, just being at farmer's markets. Um, and so we got into like Thanksgiving, which, you know, all these were like our first holiday, our first, like we, I didn't know what to expect or I don't want to say I didn't know what I'm doing because I know how to run food businesses, um, but it was a different world. It was a complete, without having a storefront, your marketing has to be really good. Your website has to be really good. Um, but I just kind of saw it as an opportunity to continue to like, the cool thing about markets is you're face to face with customers each week. The people that are coming to the markets are so supportive. They care about where their food's coming from. Um, so like the market the market, the farmer's markets are a great market <laughs> of people to sell for what I'm doing. It's like perfect. Um, yeah. And then we got into November. And so Thanksgiving was huge. So we ended up, there was a realtor group that reached out and they wanted to give pies to all their clients. So they ended up buying like 270 pies to give away. So that was wild. And we did it. <laughs> we somehow <laughs> made it happen. Some surprising things I learned this year. <laughs> so I through the whole year, I barely paid myself anything. Um, because I was trying to like build a cushion for the business and make sure I knew that going into the winter, the markets would not be there. So and I also knew I wanted to try to keep my employees. So I tried to just save as much money as I could. Um, looking back, I would probably do that a little differently just based on the tax situation that I'm in this season. <laughs> but I do have the money saved to pay it. It was just, I did not, I didn't know what I was doing on that end. Um, so I would have done that a little differently. I could have paid myself something and, you know, that would have helped. And so I would have done those things simultaneously versus feeling like I had to do one or the other um, with the money. So, and even just the cash flow, managing all of that, you know, like, I had no idea what I was doing because I ran businesses and managed that side of it. I did not do any of the financial stuff. So that was all very new and I'm good at saving money. So like, that's just what I did. <laughs> do you want to create more cash flow, put more money in your pocket and demystify your businesses, finances, and taxes once and for all? Since you're listening to my podcast, I'm pretty sure that you do. In order to create wealth and reach your goals, you have to understand your numbers and you have to intentionally manage your money so that you can understand what's actually generating profits in your business and what's not and make CEO level decisions about what to do next. So you can create a solid foundation that allows you to confidently grow and scale your business. If you're nodding along to everything I'm saying, then you need to join my 12 week Profit and Prosper group program. In this program, I teach my CFO framework for streamlining your financial systems, optimizing cash flow, and growing a bulletproof business. I've got video modules, my exclusive templates and calculators, and best of all, 12 weeks of support directly from me your personal CPA and virtual CFO. I only run this program a few times each year and the next 
cohort is officially open. It's time for you to get off the struggle bus and turn your money into the rocket fuel that propelled you toward your goals. And I cannot wait to watch it happen. Go to profitandprosper.co forward slash join now to learn more and sign up. Okay, I wrote down so many notes, so many things I want to I want to dive into. So the first one, I think you've said you were surprised at what you were able to do almost, it's not that it was like thrown together because you know what you're doing, but it's almost like these things just sort of aligned perfectly. And then the sales that you were able to do just at farmer's markets alone, I mean, to be able to sustain having a team and to sustain like all of the food costs, right. And then to sustain other, all your other expenses that you had, but then you were still able to be profitable in your first year and to build up a cushion for the slower non-farmers market months. Like, I think that's impressive. And I think this is one of the, the main reasons that I wanted to talk to you is because a lot of business owners go in thinking that they have to have like the perfect place. They have to have the perfect, like in your case, storefront, right? I've got to have the storefront in South End. And for anybody not in Charlotte, South End is like the hip, cool, one of the hip, cool areas, right? Where all of the, like everybody goes, like I have to have like the expensive storefront here. And like, I have to go, go big, go all the way to like perfection to make it work, but you didn't. And I think that's such a great way to do it because you were able to figure out like, what do people want? What sells? Like, how do I do all of this? While also like not just not losing money, but you're able to set aside a cushion. Now I do want you to pay yourself regularly. And that's something we've talked about. Yeah. We can like talk about that in a second, but I think that is, is just so interesting. And, you know, I think even like looking ahead at like the things you want to do in the future, right? Like, you know, you still, I mean, and I, I don't want to like give away all of the details, right. But like, you still don't necessarily feel like I have to have like the perfect thing in place to make my business run and be successful. Right. Yeah. And that, I mean, I still, you know, through the whole year last year, so part of it was building a cushion, but I also in my mind thought like the next thing needs to be a storefront. And so I had been through all this year, I had been exploring that talking to, you know, I had a commercial realtor that I was talking to and working with and just each time it just felt like, do I really need to do that? Because right now, I have two sales days a week. I can, you know, I make the food when I'm done, I'm done, which was a very different experience than my, my previous work where it's like six locations. There's always a fire to put out. There's always somebody who needs you to solve their problems. So it just like simplifies things. So I think in my mind, and you and I have talked about this too, it's like, you, you feel like you need that. Like you feel like oh, I have to, like, it should feel a little stressful and it should feel like overwhelming for it to feel like you're doing enough. And it doesn't have to be, (laughs) I mean, there's still a lot to figure out and there's a lot to do, but it, you don't have to like add the, you don't have to add those layers to it to still have a successful business. And I think the more I've really dug into that, the more I recognize the benefits of making it simple and keeping it simple and just grow. It can still grow. You can still grow the business, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to look like a hundred thousand dollar loan that you're going to be paying off or, you know, 10 new employees that you're now responsible for. It doesn't have to look like that. So I, I think trying to like be creative on how to just like do it this way, because in we, I'm in the Piedmont Culinary Guild and we just had a meeting this week and we were all just talking about how like this industry has just been like decimated and sort of the curtain open to how hard it is, how people are treated, what the expectations are. And like right now, like to me, recovery looks like creating something new. So recovery doesn't have to look like, how do we get back to where we were? Recovery can look like creating something that looks completely different than what we've all experienced. And like, even the employees that work with me now, 
we were all in that world of like, you work 60 hours plus you, you know, show up whenever you're needed. You work 14 hours if you need to. And so like, we were all like, what do we do now? Like, what do we do with our time? You know? And I have kids. So like, I get to spend time with my kids. I get to like, you know, do whatever, (laughs) do things that I want to do. And your whole life does not have to be wrapped up in the like grind culture of like bust your ass every single day, or that's not enough. Yes. I got such chills when you said that. I just <laughs> love that. I, I like, I couldn't say it better myself, like getting caught up in this idea of you have to work all the time. And if you're not working 60, 80 hours a week, if you don't feel stressed out, if you're not hustling, then you're not going to be successful. And I think turning that on its head is amazing. And so you've done that and you're just starting year two. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I just think that's amazing. And I mean, listen, I come from an industry that is similar where I worked in the big four. They didn't pay me enough. Like if I looked at my hourly rate, I don't think I want to (laughs) know, right? Like it, they just, they work you to death and they want to get ring as much out of you as they can and then move on to the next person, right? It's not designed for sustainability. And so, you know, I'm not making people pies, but I I'm in the same boat where like, I want to say like, this is how I can run an accounting business, right? Like we can do it differently and we can also support like having a life. Like, I feel like I should mention you have three girls yeah, and you managed to do all of this amidst pandemic. So I think that's amazing. And that mindset of like getting away from like, if I'm not working, right? If I only keep it to two days a week, two farmer's markets, right? Like I'm never going to be successful, but I mean, you work, you made it work, right? I can pay myself. I can have a profit. I can pay employees and pay them well for what they're doing. And they can also have a life (laughs) that's not, you're not on call every minute of every day to like solve someone else's problem. And I love that. I mean, we're, you know, I don't have, I only have a few employees, but like, I want to offer them a balance in their life because none of us have really experienced that in our adulthood (laughs) and in our careers. Yeah. And I'll say like, it doesn't have to be a seven figure business either. And maybe it will eventually. Right. But it doesn't have to be like, I feel like so many people chase that, like, okay, now I've gotten past the six figure mark. Like now I'm going for seven just because it's like the next thing to do. But like, it doesn't have to be, I mean, you and I, like we've sat down and looked at the numbers and it's like to do all the things you want to do. Like it doesn't have to be seven figures. It's just all in the structure. Right. Yeah. And I talked to um, another woman who has a food business in Charlotte um, whenever I was kind of exploring the commercial real estate. And she had like, to me, the best advice that like still sticks with me. And because she had recently done gone from not having a storefront to having a storefront. And I was, and I was like, would you do it again? You know, like was, do you think it was the right thing? And she's like, maybe, but she's like, the most important thing is like, what is going to give you a good life? And that looks different for everyone, but do that. Whatever you feel like is going to give you a good life. That's there's your answer. Yes. So good. Okay. Here's the next thing I want to go. I want to talk about is making that shift from you doing the farmer's markets on your own to hiring. What did you have? Three or four people in your three. first year? Yeah. Three people plus me and my husband. <laughs> he exactly. got volunteered a lot. <laughs> um, so a lot of business owners I talk to have a lot of resistance around making that first hire. Like it feels like this big, scary, overwhelming thing. And so tell me like, what are the things that you did, that you did that made you feel confident back then in your first year of business to say, I'm ready to do this? Well, really just seeing the sales. So like, I'm like, okay, if I, what I can do at one market, I can double that with one person. I can triple that with one more person. I can quadruple that with another person. So obviously the production side has to be able to keep up with that. And that's where like, I'm a chef. So I'm, and I would came from a very like high volume production background. So like, I, I'm not worried about getting the food made. I'm worried about having enough space for the food and having people to go to the markets. So that it really will, A, it was like out of necessity of like, and the, the great thing is she's like a good friend of mine. The first person that I hired, like we worked together for five years. So I remember that the one day I was like getting ready to go to the market, like had been there all day and I was about to leave. She's like, how about you go home to your family and I'll go to the market. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And I'm like, are you sure? Are you okay? You know, and she did it and she was fine. And, 
it, it's about like trusting other people, which is hard. Um, but you know, as long as you are like really clear about what you need and they're really comfortable with it, it's a win-win because they're able to, you know, be a part of something that they feel like they're contributing to, especially with a new business. Um, and you have some time because ultimately it's, if you don't give yourself that it is, you will burn out. And I've, I've definitely been there and I felt when, when it's your own business, like I always felt like I was giving it everything when I worked for someone else and I did work really hard, but when it's your business, there's like, you have to figure out how to like turn it off sometimes because there's always something you can be working on. And so being able to pass that torch a little bit and be like, okay, so for this night, I'm going to let you take care of it. And like, it was great. And so, you know, same thing happened. So then we were like, okay, so Saturday market, now we can do three markets. And, and all of those people that I hired, not only were they willing to go work the market, but they were willing to help me in the kitchen. So everybody on the team, like knows how to make the stuff in the kitchen. So like there was a point and through COVID, you know, and with kids, you never know when they're going to be like virtual school or daycare is closed for a week, or we may have COVID and we have to quarantine. And so like the team was able to like, there was a whole week where I was out and they did it and they did it without me. And I was like scared about it. And it may not have been as perfect as that. Well, you know, the, exactly the way I would have done it, but like the work got done and it was certainly to an acceptable level. And so that was really like eye opening of like, wow, okay, this can be, I can balance this. And I do have great people on my team. And I think a big part of that, and that's something that I learned from my previous job is just like how you treat people and how you take care of the people on your team matters the most because yes. you work for them. And you have to make sure they have what they need and that they feel good about what they're doing, because that's how you like gain that loyalty over time and the trust between both of you that they trust you and they, and you trust them. And I think that's a big part of what makes it work. Yes. Okay. There's so many good nuggets. I hope that all of you who are listening, who are thinking about hiring made some notes. Um, So I think, (laughs) yeah. Let me ask, this is sort of tactical, but did you have employees first or contractors? Employees. Yes, I know yeah. I need the answer. Yeah. So, and this is another one. on I, your business too. Like there definitely are just my business, what it is that made the most sense. But yes. I could see in other instances, it might, it depends on what you're trying to take off your plate or what you're trying to add to the plate for that. So, but I definitely, I started with employees and still have employees. Yes. And I will say I started with employees too. And that's something that I talk about with a lot of people is a lot of business owners want to start with sub with contractors because they feel like, oh, this is easier. This will be easier for me. And they don't necessarily have that. Like with an employee, you feel responsible, right? Yeah. For their livelihood over the long term, which yep. is true. But I think the way you did it, where you said, I know, I know what my product is. I know how to get people to buy it now. Like you figured out that out pretty quickly. And said, I know that I can make this much money with this person. And that, that is what we call ROI, right? Return on investment. If I can make an extra thousand dollars in sales for the day and I can pay somebody, I'm just throwing numbers out, right? A hundred dollars a day to like do the work for five hours or whatever it is. Like what's that ROI? 10. Yeah. I mean, we need to take out food costs and all that stuff. So even if you back out food costs, that's an ROI of five or six, right? Yeah. That's very clear. Do more of that. And then I find too, like you get to the bottleneck. And so we've talked about this before too, is like, where is the bottleneck for you right now? Which is, and that's how you figure out where do you invest next? And so you figured out like, well, your bottleneck wasn't necessarily bringing in the sales. Your bottleneck was capacity of having people to go replicate yourself at a market. But then you get to a place where, okay, now my bottleneck is actually in producing the thing to sell right yeah so which is where we're about to be <laughs> yes. april is gonna get wild <laughs> yes and so you have to know i think that's part of why you were able to grow your business profitably last year is you made that like this is where i need to spend my time and money now yeah. right and like knowing when to shift that is definitely a skill so i think that's awesome okay the next thing I want to talk about is how, you know, I think, so we, you touched on this a little bit ago, but during your first year of business, you focused on socking money away, right? 
and creating a cushion because you knew going into like maybe November, December, January, February, March, when the markets are closed, your sales were going to drop, but you wanted to keep your employees, right? So I don't know, talk me through that shift of starting away. Like, let me sock that cushion away, but then you weren't paying yourself, right? Yep. And so that's something that's also really common is like, I'm not going to pay myself because I don't want to take the money out. And so like, just kind of talk to me about that whole process of like understanding why you needed a cushion, but then you didn't want to pay yourself. And now you've shifted to paying yourself. And how have you made that shift? Uh, really working with you, <laughs> to be honest, to like lay it all out there and really dig into it and like crunch the actual numbers. Like I'm a not, and I'm not a, like a big risk taker. You probably know that about me. <laughs> I'm not a big risk taker. So like, I want to know like what something's going to look, at least have a general understanding. And then that, and and now realizing like how much of a cushion do I really need? What are my actual goals? What am I trying to achieve? What, what are my personal financial goals and needs? And how, how do those all, how do they all align? And like, the reality is that you can do all of those things. Like you can still save, you can still have a profit and you can pay yourself. And so I don't, I don't regret what I did because like we made it work. And now I have put myself in a position where we made it through the slow time. Like next week, everything, my sales are about to like quadruple every week. Um, and we made it through and, you know, and I was, I did pay myself even through that time. So I started January. I was like, this year I'm going to do that. So really working with you and like mapping everything out, having really a clear goal, clear understanding and some of the tools that you have of like the break even calculator to like quickly throw something in there and be like, okay, I can, I can make this work because I think a lot of us, there's so many things that we juggle in our head as a business owner, as a parent, um, just existing in this world. Like we're always thinking about stuff. So for me, like writing it all down, putting it like kind of laying it all out and taking the time. So that's for everyone listening, I spent the first quarter working with Sarah, knowing it was the slower time and knowing that like, I wanted to get my head around everything and kind of like have my shit together before it got wild again, so that I could go into that time confident and, and having a plan of exactly how I was going to operate. Because last year I did not, I was just like, whatever I can do. I was like everything. I felt like I was just flying by the seat of my pants all the time. But now I can look back and see sales from the year before. I understand how it can operate. I understand what my overhead looks like now. Um, so it really working with you helped me lay it all out. And that was what kind of like gave me the confidence to say like, okay, I am going to pull this money out and it's my business. So why would I not be paying myself? <laughs> I am working very hard in it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I came from a job where I made a lot of money doing that and and now I see like I can get back to that like pers- on my personal income side like the business is going to allow me to do that so it's it really just taking the time to like get granular on all the information and get organized on it that that was kind of the the point of me understanding what I can do yes and I think taking the time it does take a lot of time up front yeah right it yeah. does take it an investment of time And it can be, I totally appreciate that. But I think now once you lay it out and once you set up your systems, it's something that you should be able to going forward, like rinse and repeat and tweak as every, like things change, right? Things always shift. So I think, you know, you'll be able to do that even faster in the future. And to be clear, I was not opening myself up to be plugged, but I will (laughs) for the plug, but I will take it. Um, I mean, it's true. Yeah. It really, it was whenever I saw, you know, you posting about it, I was like, I need, I need this. And it was exactly what I was looking for. And it really has helped me tremendously. So I feel so much more confident this year, having my head around and having a plan for the financial side of the business. Yes. I love that. So you are set up for, you're going to hit your Busy season here starting next week when all the farmers markers markets open back up and you've actually are in the process or have you hired your full time like more high level person. Yeah, so well, I've, I have had one full time person through since July and she's amazing but she's like very her talent she is talented in the kitchen but like she understands marketing and social media she does graphic design. So like she is one of the most talented people and I'm so lucky to have her. 
So I'd like to use her talents. So I, I have hired someone to work just full time in the kitchen and to work a market on Saturdays, um, which I think is going to give her a little bit of time and give me just the capacity to be able to keep everything organized and keep the production rate up. Yes. So now not only are you going to grow the business, I know you have ideas for things you can do outside of farmers markets in 2022, yep. but you have the space and capacity to do that. And also the flexibility, right? I know a lot of pretty much everybody in my audience is women. And a lot of us have kids and having yeah. that flexibility. I mean, I feel like there was one day where I felt like I finally had made it and not made it like, Oh, I've, I'm done, you know, but just like yeah. finally made that shift to get out of the trenches almost and like stop hustling where our nanny called in sick one random Wednesday. And I was able to take the day off and I rescheduled my meetings. I was able to like take him to the park to be present, to play and just like hang out instead of constantly like checking my phone and like trying to juggle like calls while he was playing. And, you know, so I think that creating that space for yourself, which you I've also done, I know like creating that space allows you to do so much more, right? As As counterintuitive as it is, it just like opens up space. Like when you take time to like rest and take care of yourself and take care of your family and not have to be stressing about like, oh my God, are they making these pies today? Yeah. Right. Well, and the other part of it is like, my husband tells me this all the time of like, I'm like, oh, I got to have this many. And he's like, you're the one making the numbers up. So like, (laughs) give yourself a break. You know, like you're nobody's, you're making this stuff up. So like you're setting a standard. And so like, if that standard needs to drop down, because the kid is sick and you can't make as many that week, then that's just the reality that you're in. And you just kind of got to like, accept that. Um, yes. because it's, and the other part, and you said that, but like, so I used to do yoga all the time before I had kids, like every single day. And then I had kids and work and like, just couldn't do it. Well, my husband got me like a year of yoga classes for Christmas this year. And so I was like, you know what? Like I've prioritized everything else. And like, this is going into this year, like, I am going to do this, you know, set three or four days a week, at least to start. And, and part of that looks like having people that are also continuing to do the work because the work still has to get done. So like, that was like another motivator for me to say, like, I want to hire someone who can like work independently and do some of the stuff that gets done so that I can spend it one hour. When you really look at it, it's like one hour out of your day. Like, why have I talked myself out of doing that for so long because by doing that and taking those like steps even a small step even going on a walk just like something makes me a better mom it makes me a better boss it makes me a, you know your brain is functioning better you sleep better it's like all of these things like taking care of yourself makes you better at everything else um and I think there's always you know the mom guilt of like am I doing enough am I spending enough time with them um and you know you are you're doing because it's your best and your best is enough and whatever that looks like. And that changes day to day (laughs) of what your best looks like. Um, but just like accepting that is a big deal. Yes. I, I love that you're doing yoga classes now. I didn't know that I actually had a health coach. This was over a year ago. I was very much in the burnout phase of my business. And she said, you're choosing this. You chose all of this, right? Yep. So like you can also not choose it anymore. No one is holding, no one is making you do any of this. Yeah. And I was like, we get so wrapped up in the day-to-day stuff. I think we forget like that's true. Right. So yeah. And I have always struggled. I'm, I'm very much still working on this like mentality of like must work all the time. Like it's it's just, (laughs) I have to like, every time I feel it coming up, it's like, no, Sarah, like yesterday I worked out for 20 minutes. And I was like, Sarah, you will get so much more out of doing a 20 minute workout than you will spending 20 minutes staring at your email inbox. Right. Like, well, the funny thing is like, we all have, you know, we all have spent, I actually started putting a limit on my phone of like social media and stuff because I'm sitting here telling myself, I don't have time to do this stuff. And what am I really doing with my time? Not the most productive things that make me better. And, and, and noticing that like, because I'm, I think the same, but where it's like, is it enough? Was that, you know, a 20 minute walk or even a 20 minute yoga at home is better than none. 
Yes. So if that's all you can do that day, then great. You did it still. And that's like something to celebrate. (laughs) Well, I think that you said it, it's like social media time maybe isn't productive, but I think to me, I like to use the word restorative, right? Yeah. I like to, I got this from another like coach. So I totally haven't made it up, but it's like, is scrolling social media is staring at your email inbox, right? Is that really restorative time? Even though like I have people, somebody said the other day, it's like, well, I can do this while I, you know, I can code my transactions while I sit and watch reality TV. And I'm like, or what if you just watch TV? Like, you know, what if you (laughs) just took the time to do something more restorative? Like it, yes, productivity and all of that is like this thing I'm trying to untangle for my brain every single day it's yeah absolutely same it's like yoga you have to just keep coming back to the practice like you just have it's a practice not a perfect so you just keep practicing and you know you'll get you'll get better over time but there's not a and you know if you the other thing I kind of figured out is like okay how much time does it really take me to do some of these tasks that in my head I'm like oh I gotta go do this thing and it's like okay it took 10 minutes you're fine and just do it just get it done and do it and you're done with it (laughs) yeah uh, so good. I, I, I feel all of that. Okay. Last thing I want to touch on quickly. Cause I know, I feel like we've been like talking for a really long time. <laughs> the last thing I want to touch on is I think one of the things that has helped you a lot is setting up all of the profit first bank accounts, which I know you just yes. did in the last few months, right? Yeah. So, we're kind of messed my QuickBooks up a little bit, but we're getting that straight. <laughs> So you set up all the different bank accounts and, you know, I say to people like you don't necessarily always have to have every single one of the accounts that he suggests, but I think having a place and, you know, tell me like, how does that help you when you think about, I can afford to do this, I can pay myself this and I'm setting money aside for taxes now. Yep. Yep. Um, Yeah, no, it's been, so it's been, I started it in a really low cash flow time. So that has been a little bit challenging to, but you know, you and I had this conversation. I think one problem with the profit first just message is it's almost like a challenge of like, are you disciplined enough to do this? Like, can you do it? Cause if you're not doing it, you know, there's like a little, a lot of pressure that goes along with it. So I think if you can take that away, it is very helpful. And also recognizing that like maybe based on your cash flow, you don't, do it you do it once a month or you do it you know if you need to like one month not do something it's okay and just knowing that but like ultimately getting in the practice of it it is extremely helpful um and so I'm excited to do it when the cash flow is going to be significantly more because it'll just be easier to be like but I mean there was definitely weeks and I, I go kind of week to week on mine or I have been through the slow season um but you make it like you make it work with what you have. So like, you know, I'm, payroll is the most important thing to make sure you have that. Um, I buy my food supplies once a week, each week. So like those are the two and that's going to then allow me to make the sales for the, the following weekend um, and, and pay myself. And it's cool to like see those accounts as they grow and as you move it out. And like it, it's it's been very, very helpful and it just helps it be. It, like you said, it gives everything a job. So it doesn't feel you're not shooting in the dark. You're not just like, oh, we'll see what happens. I think I can do it. But like you have the actual numbers there. Because another thing that I did not really know to do well through last year too was like payroll taxes. So like, you know, when you and I were talking and we went through like, okay, how much is this person going to get paid? Add 15% because for payroll tax. That I've been doing and that it just gives you peace of mind it takes away some of the surprises because like there's nothing worse than you know before I'd go on my bank account and oh shit this like I didn't expect this nine hundred dollars or whatever it is to come out and you weren't expecting it so like knowing what's coming and having it you know that it's there for that thing and so it's fine it just takes the like a level of pressure and stress off of it um and it's again it's like getting in the habit of doing it and it being part of your like weekly bi-weekly or monthly um checklist because that was another thing that I did this year was I made a checklist for like each day of the week um from like a kitchen production standpoint as well as on like on the back end financial stuff what needs to be done each day and that way again you're not just like reeling in your head of like oh my god there's so many things to do you got it it's it's listed out you can double check it it keeps you from forgetting things 
um because that's another thing as a parent you know it's like squirrel 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 constantly and like things that you weren't planning on happening happen and you got to deal with it and you can't get around it but then you can always come back to that and say like okay or i can do this today and this will be fine to not do today um but having it all listed out i'm a big list person so that's really helpful for me yes yeah so i think that you know i like that you said you can almost like customize the way that you use it and I agree yeah. with you. That was always a sense that I got is like when I read it, I love the system, right? I tell everybody to read the book. Yeah, no, it is I great. I think not feeling like you're doing it wrong if you're not doing it exactly as they prescribe in the book, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. So like I, I tend to not use percentages. I just tend to say, like you said, I know what's coming out in the next month. And I tend to just say like, this is what I need to cover in the next month. And then what I find over time is as you transfer money, I end up having extra left over yeah. right in the income account. Or if I put money in my expense account, like this is sort of what I plan to spend for the next month. And then I get to the end of the month and I'm like, I have a thousand dollars left over because I didn't spend yeah. as much as I planned. I was like, that is amazing. Right. And so yeah. that helps yeah. me. I take that, put it in my savings, put it to my retirement, give myself a bonus, right? Like whatever that is. So it's, I just, I like to talk to people who use it because most business owners start off with one bank account. And yep. then they tell me like, I just don't know what I can spend on. I don't think I can pay myself. I don't know if I can afford this. I'm like, this will help you solve that. Right. It so, really, yeah, it really does. And one thing you suggested that I am going to be doing this quarter is put something aside, like just for you. That's not like my kid's college fund or even like your retirement. Yes. And, and investing. Yes. Like definitely do all this. But I'm like, I really want a new yoga mat and a bathing suit. And so like, I'm going to spend $200 on that because I want it just because I want it. And like, yes. that's been hard for me. And I think women and moms and business owners, like you, you, I like, I'm happy to reward my employees. I'm happy to give them a gift or a bonus. So why would I not do that for myself? And it, it does just give you like a, just so, something that brings you joy Do it. Yes. You know, and, and, save, and and allocate the money to that. Be like, here, this little piece is just for me. And this other stuff is going to all the responsible things <laughs> and, you know, all the things that need to happen. Um, but that was just something that, that you said that I just had not even thought about. Um, so that's been yeah. great. Yeah. Yes. I think, I mean, especially everybody does it. I mean, I don't mean to say that women do this more than men. I think women do it for different reasons than men sometimes, but we feel like, oh, I, I have to like, you know, put all this money to my kids, 529s, or like, I have to, you know, contribute to the household stuff. Like, no, you can spend some money just for fun, right? Like it doesn't make you a bad person for prioritizing yourself out of all. And of it this. makes it exciting to be like, oh, I get to do, I don't know. It's like a sweet little gift for yourself that, yes. you know, that nobody else can do for you. So like, what do you want? And it doesn't exactly. have to be a lot, but just something um, that's, I'm excited for that. But it can also be a lot. So I told my husband sure. this year, sure. we actually sat down and this is one, like, I don't want to get, sometimes I feel like I end up in like marriage counseling with, <laughs> with some of my clients, but you know, you have to like work out as with your spouse, right. Of like, sure. my husband and I sat down and we said, we agree. This is our monthly household budget. I will contribute half these are our savings goals. I will contribute this amount to our savings goals. And then I said, listen, if I kill it in my business this year, because I worked really hard, if I bust my ass to make this happen, if I make more than this, I'm going to put it to what I want to put it to. Like, you're not telling me <laughs> what I can spend this money on because to me, like, where's the motivation for me to go yeah. above and beyond if I can't put it where I want to put it, if I can't build a new deck on the back of my house. If I can't like put it towards my lake house fund. Right. So yep. I think it's important to like make money, not to always, always do good for other people, but to, like spend some on yourself. And that actually brings me into my last question. And I have decided this is the question I'm going to ask every person who comes on because I, I love the answers and I know your answer, but I just love it so much. So when you, you know, get to the point where you feel like, you have money to spend and you get to a place where you're like, this is my, like, I feel, I don't want to use the term like wealthy in terms of like making tons of money, but like 
what is one thing that you would spend your money on or you want to spend your money on at some point in the future that today just feels like extravagant, right? Like what's like the big thing that would make you feel like I am living a super rich life right now? Um, a few things. And I know we have talked about this, but, and you have one of the same goals, but a Tesla to me would be a goal. Um, <laughs> I have a Nissan Leaf right now, so I have an electric car, but it's like, I have like an 80 mile range. So I struggle with that sometimes. Uh, so that would be one, but I want to eventually, I want to have like a farm. I want to have like a country house with a farm, with a huge garden. I want to be able to supply my business with produce and other things that we grow. Um, so that's like, and, and, and I think, but when I get there, I would also like to have someone else like managing the day-to-day -day part of the business. So the time and the space where the two things would, that would be like, okay, I'm, you know, the business is still running and I'm still a part of it. And I have this time to like work with my hands and do things just because I want to, yes. not because I have to. That sounds amazing. And I think this is when I, when I talk about this with clients, I'm like, how can you, I think a lot of times we think this is going to happen when I retire, this is going to happen in 10 years. It's like, how can you work towards making that happen with your business? Like sooner. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and I so think you, that's something that, sorry. No, I was going to say, so you build your business, right. You, you think like, well, if this is something I want in the end, like what are the things to your point, how do I create the time and space and also money for myself to be able to do that? Yes. Yeah. I think that I'm with you as far as like, I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to like have time and enjoy my life. I enjoy my life with what I'm doing, but to have the time freed up, and feel fine financially. I don't want to wait until then, you know, I want to do things with my kids. I want to like travel and I want to do that while they're still, you know, in my life. Cause the big scheme of thing, your kids are only in your day-to-day -day life for, you know, maybe a third of your life if you're doing it right. But, um, so I think that I don't want to wait for that. Like I want to be able to do that. Yes. Well, I think that in this year in 2022, I have a feeling you're going to kill it in a good way. <laughs> so <you. laughs> I'm excited to see what happens. And I feel like I could just keep talking to you all day. This was so good. <laughs> and I'm so appreciative. You came on to talk about all of this. I think that everybody's going to love to hear how you've done all this. I think what you've done in the first year of your business is amazing. And it's also thank possible. You. It is possible for everybody else listening, right? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you to you. You really, you really have helped me like get on a track where I'm not just getting by like I feel I just feel so much more confident and clear about what what my purpose is and how I'm going to get there I love that that's what I'm here for all right well I will talk to you later thank you so all right. much sounds Thanks good thank you have a great day thanks for listening to this week's episode now I want you to go take some action what's one thing you can do this week to create more profit in your business Send me a DM on Instagram at youngcocfo and share your action item with me. If you have a question or topic you'd like me to dive into, or if you're feeling empowered about taking charge of your finances, let's continue the conversation. Go to profitandprosper.co to submit a question or topic for me to talk about on the show. And because we all profit and prosper better with friends, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, Subscribe wherever you listen and share the episode. Make sure you tag me at Youngco CFO on Instagram so I can give you some love and I'll see you in the next episode.